welcome back to my youtube channel hashtag movie bay i am movie bay and in this video i'm going to be recapping and reviewing episodes one and two of college hill celebrity edition season two but before we get too into it though i would like for y'all to drop down and hit the subscribe button thank you because here on movie bay i do reviews reactions and commentary to movies and television and if that is the type of content that you like you might as well stick around and hit the subscribe button and if you find yourself enjoying my commentary along the way don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up and or drop a comment down below to share your own thoughts now i just reached my milestone of 1k hey thank you to everyone who has been rocking with me especially since my uh malcolm and marie review okay like we goes back all right we goes back and i'm finally at 1k overdue well deserved in my opinion in my humble opinion so thank y'all for everyone who has subscribed now before we get into season two of college Show celebrity edition i just wanted to let y'all know that i also reviewed season one when they were at tsu university in houston texas which is right down the street from my hbcu alma mater prayer view AM university so make sure y'all go back and binge that playlist as well now, when it comes to season two, first, they're in Alabama State University. And like I just say, stated, I am an HBCU grad. So I'm just here for I'm here for the exposure of the HBCU culture. All right. First and foremost. Secondly, <laughs> when I saw the cast, I said, oh, yes. Oh, hell yes. When I watched season one, because I was opposed to this show at first, it was because Stacey Dash at HBCU i gotta watch it now season two cast you got two reality star ogs more specifically new york for me okay if you know you know you know tiffany new york pollard in the same house as jocelyn hernandez bruh and then y'all got my my fake in my head boyfriend iman shepherd <laughs> so you know I had to watch season two. So let's go ahead and get into the cast. Y'all know we had to start with the HBIC, Tiffany New York Pollard. We find out that she did community college for two days and she could not understand the college. What did she call it? Curriculum. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> We have Blame It On K-Way, who's known for his social media personality, TT, and he actually used to go to TSU, but he had to drop out because, well, I guess he had to drop out. He chose to drop out because he became so famous that he couldn't even go to class. Now, when Tiffany and K-Way get into the house, they decide to switch New York's basket with an AR basket so that they could room together. More on that later. Next into the house, we have Orion, who is Omarion's from B2K's brother. And I personally, y'all, did not know that he was Janae Aiko's first baby daddy. Like, I did not know that until like earlier this year, maybe. And when you look at it, Orion really does look like Big Shot. <laughs> It's safe to say that she has a touch. But of course, I was really surprised that they actually showed Orion's Jumpin' Jack video. I said, oh, do you know this on a streaming app? Because they would never, BET would never put that clip if this was on cable. Next up, we have the Puerto Rican princess, Jocelyn Hernandez, entering the house. And her backstory was that she couldn't afford college. And she believes that she would have been an astronaut. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for her circumstantial, you know, environmental circumstances. Now, I never pegged Jocelyn for a STEM major. I just never, she doesn't give me STEM girl. She gives me communications, to be honest. I ain't even gonna hold you. Next up, we have my, ooh, ooh, we have my dream ideal man. And this is no disrespect to Tiana, but girl. Girl, you lucky as hell. This is my man, y'all. Iman, and I'm going to pronounce his last name wrong because I always do. Shumpert. So, yeah, my baby. Okay. He going back to college to learn some marketing skills, and he wants to learn how to sew. Y'all, let me just talk about my baby real quick. So, he is my type. Tall, dark skin, athletic, got a nice body, nice build. He can dress. He a little bit of a weirdo. Like, oh, my God, Tiana, I'm jealous. Next up, we have Parker McKenna Posey that played Katie on My Wife and Kids. We found out that she didn't do well in high school um, because she didn't apply herself. So she is here to show her parents that she's not a dumbass. And that's what she said. That's what she said, y'all. I didn't say that. 
Next up, we have Amber Rose, who y'all know, she was a former dancer, video girl, dated celebrities, had some babies bomb. Um, she also stated that college wasn't in the cards for her, but she does want her kids to know that you should never stop learning and it's never too late to go back to college and things like that. Last but not least, we have Ray J. And Ray J was also on season one. And he's back because he did not graduate from TSU due to what he says his family personal business was just too much for him at that time. I agree. And if y'all watch my season one reviews, I was on Ray J's head the entire time. I hope, you know, I hope that he learned his lesson. And now that you're back in school, you got to do it the right way. I was the same way, Ray J. I had a lot going on too. I was kicked out of school the first time too. But when I went back, I had my head on straight. So let's make sure, Ray J, that I'm not on you this season. Everybody is in the house. Um, we get a little bit of insight into what New York has been up to. She brings in this stuffed animal dog because she lost her real dog named Lullaby and is to help her grieve. Now, first off, when New York tells Jocelyn, New York says, I lost my dog, Jocelyn said, where did she go? <laughs> to heaven, Jocelyn. All dogs go to heaven, Jocelyn. And Jocelyn also makes a comment how people are so weird to buy animals knowing that they're going to die in 15 years. And immediately everybody's like, Jocelyn, be nice. Because she is low-key being very insensitive to this situation. So in the house, Amber finds her room and she finds out that she is roommates with Ray J. And y'all all know they have that whole like little Kardashian thing in common. And Amber just rather not. So she goes and speaks to K-Way in New York about it. And she says to K-Way that, you know, I actually would rather be your roommate. Now, even though New York is already his roommate, K-Way says, okay, yeah, that's fine. Now in my head, I, I was just like, well, K-Way, why didn't you just take the L and go be roommates with Ray J? And that way everybody's comfortable versus they're talking about rearranging rooms and bringing a bed upstairs and all this extra stuff. Like that is just doing too much. In the meantime, everybody gets together for a house meeting and they are then informed that they're going to go to ASU's football game. Now at this football game, first off, when you go to HBCU's, you know, the football is nice, but you already know that you're coming for the halftime show. And on College Hill Season 2, all the cast members have to get involved in some type of extracurricular activity. And this is where we get an insight to New York wanting to be a flag girl. I was about to call her Katie. Parker is interested in being a cheerleader and K-Way wants to be a drum major. When they get home from the football game back at the house, it's time to now make the room arrangements. And K-Way is the only person that is helping bring the mattress and bed frame and bed headboard, everything up to uh, his in New York's room so Amber can be their third roommate. And he's just wondering, where are all the other guys at? <laughs> and this is my baby, man. He's like, you know what? I am good at minding my own business. Because period. Because like, baby, you ask it for too much. K-Way, just take the room downstairs if you want to be so accommodating to Amber. And then in the meantime, Amber is kind of like bossing him around. Like, can you go do this for me? Can you go do that for me? Oh, and can you also do this? And it's low-key driving K-Way insane. Now, later on in the episode, we do find out that they already have like some type of friendship prior to the show. Um, so... It, when he said that, it was like, oh, okay, maybe this is just their relationship. But at the same time, she was giving very bossy, diva, entitled type energy to me. I don't even act that way to my friends. The cast comes together for their first family dinner of the season. And somehow they start talking about raw food and well done food. This, of course, turns into a sexual conversation that Ray J feels the need to indulge in. He says that he likes his cat raw and not well done. See, Ray J, you didn't even have to make a comment. You see Iman over there, minding his business, not even entertaining this conversation. But of course, Ray J had to join into the sexual conversation. So this is when Jocelyn lightly, politely checks him. She says, well, I hope you're talking about your wife's cat because that's the only cat you need to be talking about. Rightfully so. I didn't see a problem in it because one, his wife is her friend. Two, we all know that Ray J is good for an infidelity, okay? So I don't feel like she was in the wrong for saying it, but they're building up this storyline that Jocelyn is the very opinionated, speak your mind, bully of the house. So 
of course, everybody's confessional is stating how Jocelyn always speaks her mind. Jocelyn turns a lighthearted moment into something serious. I felt like she was being lighthearted. But as a Scorpio, sometimes we come off a little raw, raw when we are just playing. You know what I'm saying? But people like Orion would have pissed me off because if I'm chilling, don't ask me why I'm so lit. I'm about to get lit on your ass in a minute. So the next morning, it is time for their first day orientation. This is where they go to the bookstore, they buy their merch, they get their IDs, and then they get the campus history lesson. This is where we learn about the Marion Nine, which was five slaves that raised $500 to purchase a building so that African Americans can have the same educational opportunities as the white people. This is the part that I love about the College Hill. Please drop that black history knowledge on people, especially for the people who try to talk down on HBCUs, because if it wasn't for HBCUs, your black ass probably wouldn't even have an opportunity to get into college you know what i'm saying because pwis wasn't accepting us at first this is also when dr petty lays down the ground rules of alabama state university so you basically have to carry yourself with some type of decorum when you are on campus okay that means be on time have good attendance no drugs and alcohol on campus and fighting is all zero tolerance now when she says no drugs and alcohol new york's ears poked up because Obviously, she's alleviated right now. And she even tells Dr. Petty this information. I was like, New York, girl, it's given that she's going for the class clown. And Jocelyn also notes it. And Jocelyn is low-key not here for it. Dr. Petty gives the cast their first assignment, and that's to learn the campus hymn. And Amber immediately objects because it has God in it. And I'm an atheist. Now, in my head, I was like, well, what is the hymn? Because if it's just the word God, like, just skip over the word, bitch. Like, it's the type of person, it's given that she the type of person that always got something to say, just in an annoying way. Like, hypothetically, if we all talking about how Lucky Charms is the best cereal, and she the person that's going to interject her opinion and says, well, Lucky Charms is a processed cereal, and I personally eat oatmeal every day. Like, it's... That it's giving that she's that type of person, and I don't like the type of person. However, due to her non-religious beliefs, Dr. Petty accommodates her and gives her an alternative assignment. Back at the house, this is where we find out about Amber Rose growing up mixed kids struggles. Skip. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. But it's the generic story. It's the generic story. She's biracial. Her mom is black. Her dad is white. It low-key was giving the opposite. I ain't even gonna hold you. But of course, because she was so bright, she was bullied and picked on in school in South Philly. And she had to carry a steak knife in her backpack to protect herself. Maybe just because you was in South Philly, bitch. No, I'm just playing. But, um, you know, it's just a typical mixed kid story. I don't want to, like, discredit what mixed people, biracial people go through. But it's all the same. Woe is me. I'm light-skinned and people hate me. Now let's go ahead and go back to some house drama. So earlier on in the episode, New York and Jocelyn have another conversation about her doctor, dog her passing away. And Jocelyn misunderstood New York. She thought that she said her daughter passed away. So when she thought she was talking about her daughter, Jocelyn was more sympathetic, gave her a whole hug and, you know, crying and all that stuff. So she talks to Parker about it and Parker clears up the miscommunication and she was like, oh no, baby, it was her dog that passed away. So now Jocelyn is upset. When Jocelyn goes and confronts New York about how basically she shouldn't be so sad over a dog when people have real life kids that could pass away. And I knew that New York and Jocelyn was going to get into it, but I did not think it was going to be on the first episode. I'm not even going to lie. New York is basically saying, you can't tell me how to feel about my about my pet you know what i'm saying just because it's not a human doesn't mean i doesn't i don't love them the same and new york's getting emotional about it because obviously she's still grieving jocelyn's not pulling back holding any reins so new york eventually screams can we talk about this later and she just screams like ah and jocelyn <laughs> says you need to talk to a psychologist <laughs> All that right there. You need to talk to a psychologist. I was like, oh, Lord. Now we going back and forth about mental health. Jesus Christ. This is a classic argument between dog parents and, you know, human parents. 
You know, human parents always discredit dog parents saying it's not the same. But low key, it kind of is as a person who don't got kids. (laughs) I'm a person who doesn't have kids. It's kind of the same, though. Because you built this connection and this bond to, yes, it's an animal, but you still love them. And when they pass away, like anything you love that passes away or goes away, you'll never be able to see them again. It's going to hurt. So you can't tell her that she shouldn't be crying over an animal when that animal was her baby. She took care of it. You know what I'm saying? Took it to the vet, took it to the doctor's appointment, fed it, washed it, bathed it, trained it. You know what I'm saying? The only difference is she could put it in a kennel for eight hours while she goes to work. You can't do that to a human baby. You'll go to prison for that. So after the argument, Jocelyn is basically held up in her room for hours. And y'all know Parker is her roommate. And Parker comes to the door, knock, knock. It's PP. Can I come in? Waits two hours. Knock, knock. Hey, can I come in? Is no response. So Parker is locked out of her room. I low key like the fact that they have them actually like being roommates because that is like some college type shit. Like, you might not be able to get in your room one day. I'm not that roommate that'll lock you out. I'm the roommate that'll beat the door down because bitch, I live here too. Outside, everybody is discussing Jocelyn and her insensitivity. Is that a word? <laughs> to everybody in the house that's when parker comes out and tells them that she too has been locked out of her room for hours just adding on to how jocelyn is an issue in the house they decide to call a house meeting with jocelyn involved just so that they can reset the culture of the house everybody states their boundaries she states her boundaries that way there's no tension between anybody this is when jocelyn calls parker her ex-roommate and that she's fake because she'd rather go tell the house about what's going on versus coming to her about what's going on but jocelyn she was knocking at the door for two hours bitch she did try to talk to you girl this is when parker says i right, you don't want to be my roommate no more bet and she walks off so that was the end of episode one y'all before we get into episode two they did an overview of the entire season and first off, Orion in New York, I feel like there's going to be some kinky shit. Um, Jocelyn is going to continue to be made the bad guy. Ray J is probably going to get kicked out of school again. And of course, there are going to be a lot of tears. If you're enjoying my commentary so far, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Team dog parent, team human parent. No, I was way. <laughs> I was just playing. We don't need, we don't need no, we don't need no further divides in the community. Hey, that. Um, And of course, subscribe for more content just like this. Let's go ahead and get into episode two. So episode two is the first day of class. Everybody's getting ready for their first day and everyone is excited. Parker is heading out and she's like, yes, I'm so ready for today. And Jocelyn says, run along, bitch. (laughs) Jocelyn is so doesn't care she just doesn't care so this starts an argument early in the morning and amber is just drained by the toxic energy of jocelyn find out that iman is going to miss the first couple days of class because he has a prior arrangement in atlanta he did already tell professor petty which is good because last time ray j didn't tell anybody when he was going to miss school he just left so at least iman is doing it properly and he also asked orion to take notes for him no, Tino Shay is giving college athlete. Amber decides that she's going to take it upon herself to be responsible for Ray J, making sure that he wakes up every morning. That way he can go to class and pass this time around. It's time to leave for school and everybody's ready except for Jocelyn. It's always one person every season that has to be that late person. Um, Jocelyn has changed her outfits two, three, four, five, six times and I ain't going to hold you. I'm Jocelyn. I am, and what about it? So a majority of the cast leaves on the first van, leaving Orion and Ray J behind to wait on Jocelyn. So they eventually, they get tired of waiting, and they decide that they're going to pull off too. However, when they decide they were going to pull off, Jocelyn is walking out the door literally, and she sees them leave her. But they do circle the van and come back to get her, and of course, y'all know Jocelyn went off on them. She tells Ray J that he's fake because he they supposed to be cool, and he's straddling the fence. And she also goes off on Orion, which is needed because, y'all, I don't like Orion, but we'll get into that a little bit later. First class of the day is African American Literature. And they talk about orature, which is spoken literature, spoken stories. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I couldn't really find the connection on how that turned into religion, but it did. And 
<laughs> New York starts singing this gospel song, and y'all already know Amber and her atheist ass is not here for it. So Amber turns the conversation into, I don't know, a very tense one. So she starts questioning, you know, or not questioning, stating how Christianity was brought and taught by the white man. So what exactly is a black church? Yeah, okay, we all know this. Africans, we had our own religion before slavery. Okay, Christian is a white person's quote unquote religion, and it was taught to slaves, all right, in order to control them. Okay, we know these things. However, I love the professor's opinion, not opinion, response, and she stated that just like a lot of things, people are taught or forced to learn different things, but black people turned it into our own. This is when we start seeing that K-Way is yet again offended or put off by Amber and her proud atheism, okay? And I, I'm not like a devout Christian or anything, but I feel like Amber always has something to say. So their assignment for this class is to think about your relationship to the black church, to spirituals, or lack thereof. They then go into their next class, African-American history, with a concentration on the civil rights movement, which is perfect for Montgomery, Alabama, no tea. So the, in this course, the professor starts by speaking on how white supremacy, Europeans, how it was their goal to spread Christianity and Amber starts clapping and, like K-Way said, puffing out her chest and yes, 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 and all that that the professor is saying. And, of course, we all knew that in order for them to force their religion, it was done through genocide, violence, slavery, okay? Now, this is when the professor opens the floor for everyone to speak and have a dialogue. This is when we find out that Parker is also biracial, I mean... I didn't know that, but, you know, we found out that Parker is also biracial along with Amber. So, you know, it's all it's talking about uh, segregation. Slavery is always a sticky conversation. And then we found out that New York fiance is white and that things can get tense in her household when, you know, speaking about politics and BLM and things of that matter. The professor also mentions group work, partnering up with someone for the semester. Um, to accomplish some of the uh, assignments that they will have. And of course, Jocelyn says, mm, this is not going to work because I'm a little bit of an outcast. And I love this professor's response. So, and I didn't know this, baby, dropping knowledge, okay? The professor says, you know, it's amazing how anybody in the civil rights movement got anything accomplished because they had their own cliques within their organization. You know, and everybody didn't get along. Black people, black people. Right, what I'm saying like we can never agree. It's always subsections of black people. But he says it's a surprise that they got anything done, but they got it done because they knew the goal was more important than their little spites against each other. Just loved his response. Okay, relate the chorus back to their lives so they can really understand the concept. I love that. Go ahead, professor. Now, to me, this was a contrived uh, reality TV moment, but Ray J stays behind to basically inquire about, you know, is it okay to be a black conservative? Because he knows his upbringing and black history. However, his political views as an adult is more so conservative. And what I like about this season, I feel like last season had some great talking points as well. Please go back and binge season one if you didn't watch it um, and my reviews on it. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the talking points for season two are, are really good. They're heated. They're taboo. But they need to be had. I'm, I'm feeling this season so far. After class, Jocelyn decides to talk to Dr. Petty about the drama that's been going on in the house how she feels that everybody's ganging up on her. Meanwhile, the group is talking about how Jocelyn is the one that is rubbing everybody the wrong way. So Dr. Petty says to Jocelyn, you know, just remember why you're here. Remember why you left your daughter. You didn't leave your daughter to be involved in BS. You left your daughter to uh, accomplish your goal. So make sure you stay on point. I'm not going to touch long on this. I just wanted to say season one, it wasn't much interaction with the kids on campus. Season two it is. But in this moment, I just realized how lame and annoying and corny Orion actually is. And why did Amber tell Ray J to put a Tide Pod in the washing machine with towels? Baby, we use bleach for that. Is that your white side coming through? 
at home, Amber continues her hate for religion speech. And K-Way basically asks questions to get to know the root of her beliefs or her disbeliefs and i honestly want to know too so of course what atheists usually say amber says she talks about how christians are hypocritical she also talked about the bible being fake that's a whole nother subject for me however talking about how christians are hypocritical i want to talk on that real quick christians are people and people are humans and humans are not perfect humans have sin you're basing your relationship on with god on people and you should not do that it doesn't matter about what the church ladies say it doesn't matter oh they say they talk about people that's not christian like or they do this and that's not christian like yeah because the goal is to be christian like but we are still with sin no one is perfect And I just don't like when people base their relationship or their opinion on God based off of man. And that's all I got to say about that because I ain't about to get too religious on y'all. I just had to bless y'all with that word on this Sunday. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Now, one thing I wanted to say, though, that K-Way is really trying to understand. And I love that for him. New York is saying, you know what? It don't matter what you believe in. I still love you. And I'm here, I'm here for that. And I just honestly want Amber to be the same way because I'm not getting that. I'm not getting, it doesn't matter what you believe in. I still love you. It's giving, I need to interject my opinion on every subject matter <laughs> that has to do with God. They had, it was church bells ringing and she, oh, but I don't give a fuck about that. Girl, like, why do you have to be so hostile when it comes to Christianity? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. The group decides to go out for dinner. And of course, Jocelyn is the last one ready. So she and Ray J are left behind. Now in the car, Amber states that she personally doesn't give a F who comes and who doesn't. But yet you're talking about Jocelyn having the negative energy. Yeah, okay. So when they get to the restaurant, Tiffany states that she wants a fresh energy in the house. And K-Way states that he's open to everybody for everybody. And Amber wants to know, but why? But why are you open though? Like, but why? But for why? And K-Way hit that, because I'm a Christian. Oh, ah! (laughs) Because I'm a Christian and I'm taught to love and accept everyone. And in my head, I'm thinking, you should try it, bitch. Jocelyn and Ray J get to the restaurant and... Even Ray J said he noticed that the energy at the table was on automatic defense mode. So it would depend on how Jocelyn came into the situation on how the situation would go. So Jocelyn came in and they were like, oh, we didn't think you were going to make it. And she was like, why are y'all about to leave or something? And and everybody is offended. Like, Like, come on. I didn't hold y'all up. I didn't ask y'all to wait to eat. I didn't ask y'all to wait to order. Do y'all thing. If I'm going to come, if I come, when I come, like it shouldn't affect you ultimately. And I say that as the person who is normally late to organizations. (laughs) I'm usually the person that's late. Okay. Don't hold your orders for me. I'm going to be there when I get there and I'll order. And if I got to stay behind because y'all ready to leave, then that's just what it is. Y'all don't have to wait on me. So Jocelyn isn't feeling the energy. She decides to go to the restroom. Amber also decides that she's going to take a smoke break and goes to the restroom thinking that Jocelyn would not be in there. But Jocelyn was in there. Now, how they set the scene up, I thought they was about to fight in the bathroom, but it was actually the opposite. So Jocelyn asked if Amber was still mad at her. And Jocelyn states that she was really just mad because at Amber because she's roommate with New York. And I don't know. It made no sense. So Amber tells Jocelyn that she didn't like her because of all the yelling and screaming. It's a trigger for her due to her toxic background. And um, <laughs> Jocelyn says, me too. I completely understand that. I came from the same abusive blah, 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 blah. And Amber automatically is understanding now because, oh, we're the same. It's very seldom that I meet anybody that has the same background as me. Bitch, we all grew up in toxic situations. What are you talking about? I feel like for Amber to act so enlightened and to be like an overachiever and just wanting to be all different in things, I feel like that was a very ignorant statement for her. 
You don't have to have the same background as someone just to understand why they react how they react. You should still be open and receptive to understanding people regardless. And I just thought that was a very ignorant comment that she made. I pray, This is what I get for Amber, y'all. From Amber, I get a very, and I don't want to use this word, but she plays victim to me. Let me tell you why. She was offended by Jocelyn's energy, but at the very same time, she's F this and F her and F this and F her and I don't give a F about her and F this and F her. What about your energy, bitch? But the moment Jocelyn says something to you, oh, why are you yelling and screaming? Oh, it's a trigger. But yeah, you can say F this and F that. Like Amber gives me victim. And she's one of those people. I've talked about this a couple times on my Bad Boys review. Somebody that you think that you will like, when they get on TV, you find out, eh, that's not my type of bitch. Amber just not my type of bitch, bro. She not. So New York comes in. It's a whole kumbaya. All the beef is squashed. Later on in the episode, we see Ray J is trying to get a flight, uh, get a ride to Atlanta airport, and he's packing up his belongings, and he's headed out the door. Don't know what that's about at this point. I don't care, Ray J. College isn't for everybody, baby. And it's probably not for you. Thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Be sure you hit the subscribe button to stick around for more reviews on College Hill Celebrity Edition Season 2. Hopefully, I didn't ruffle too many feathers. Okay, hopefully, I didn't ruffle too many feathers. But if you enjoy my content, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Voice your thoughts and opinions on my commentary in a respectful manner because if not, y'all ass will get blocked and deleted, period. Um, or your thoughts and opinions on the topics on the show, the show in general. Thank y'all so much for tuning into my YouTube channel and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.